In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. <clears throat> Show me just what Mohammed brought that was new, and there you will find things only evil and inhuman, such as his command to spread by the sword the faith he preached. These words of a late Byzantine emperor, Manuel Paleologus, were cited by Ratzinger during a German, a German university lecture some two weeks ago, and they caused, as they say, quite a dust up, which hasn't settled down yet, giving rise to all sorts of speculation and interpretation. One of the most interesting was a curious uh, email we received this week from a traditionalist French website who maintain that the German modernist is in cahoots with Neil Bush, 42's brother, with whom, I did not know this, with whom he founded a number of years ago an ecumenical institute in Switzerland, the chief rabbi of France and an imam and different Protestant leaders are also members of this group. Now, this a French website then has published a claim that Ratzinger said these words deliberately to provoke uh, a reaction from the Muslims so as to promote the neoconservative efforts to have a war in Iran by throwing oil on the fire. I asked Father Chikada about this, and he said no, he didn't think so. He thought that rather that Ratzinger was typical of that kind of a left-wing ivory tower intellectual who is sort of out of it. He doesn't really realize his effects on others and that in any case he would, when it comes to Bush, have only contempt for a man of so little education and so little intellectual depth. And as for myself... I say this, that even a broken clock is correct twice a day. And I thank Almighty God that he deigned to use this man, these means, to get the word out to the world which knows it to be true because we see it and we live it every day all of these evil and inhuman things which Mohammed began. So thus, in the midst of an obscure, long speech at that university, a speech very typical of the new theology of the modernists, that is to say, lacking in clarity or precision of thought, you compare the way Ratzinger or John Paul II spoke and did business with, say, Saint Pius X or Pope Pius XI. Their encyclical, so clear, so easy to read and to follow. In any case, the text he cited is true. It is true yesterday, and it will be true tomorrow. Why? Because while Christianity has, for the most part, been subverted, modernized, Islam has never changed over the centuries. This frustrates the modernists no end. And in any case, it never was, nor is it today, a religion of peace, as President Bush falsely claims. The ecumeniacs in our midst want to have a dialogue with the devil who produced these evil and inhuman doctrines. Dialogue. Dialogue done God's way is to crush error right out. And how does God do that? He does it 
by way of a woman who destroyed all heresies, our Blessed Lady. Today, we have the fifth of her September feasts. She who is the queen of angels. We honor as Our Lady of Ransom for the redemption of captives. And very beautifully, last night at the Vesper Hour of the Divine Office, the Church introduced today's sacred liturgy by applying to Mary the words of praise of Judith in the Old Testament, Adonai, Lord God, great and admirable, who hast wrought salvation by the hand of a woman. Judith, you see, delivered a city, one city, from the power of the pagans. Esther delivered rescuing her whole people from destruction. But the queen of heaven outshines both. She will free all of her children. You see, when the Crusades were initially successful and the Latin kingdom was established at Jerusalem, and at the same time, the Spanish kings began the Reconquista, the reconquering of the Iberian Peninsula, driving the Muslims further and further south off of Christian soil, why then they took to the seas, and they became pirates. And they would very often capture Catholics who were living on the coast, the Mediterranean coast. And very often, as pirates, they would take over ships. And then those poor Christians would be enslaved in Africa, held under terrible terms and terribly tempted, threatened, pushed to apostasy the worst of all sins. This still goes on today. The Muslims hold many, many Christians as slaves in Africa, and in Saudi Arabia, many Christian workers have to try to eke out a living in a condition that is very little less than slavery, and always under pressure to become a Muslim, to apostatize. Mary, our mother, seeing her children in this danger, appeared one night in the year 1218 to three men, two priests and a king, St. Raymond of Penacourt, St. Peter Nolasco, and King James of Aragon. And he told, she told them that it would be most pleasing to her if they were to establish an order for the redemption of captives. This order was founded right, as we would say today, in the face of of the Muslims. It was composed of knights who would patrol the coasts and actually fight the Muslims, and then of priests who would chant the divine office, pray in the priories, and then collect money, negotiate with the Muslims for the release of Christian slaves to buy them back, their ransom, giving themselves over in place of them when they ran out of money supreme work of charity. Sometimes the priests would fight too. They say that when they opened the tomb of St. Peter Nolasco, they saw him over his habit wearing his cuirass, which is a leather piece of armor, a breastplate. Imagine how those poor slaves would feel, those Christian captives in, in Africa, to see a priest vested in white come and to be freed at long last from their servitude. Our Lady of Ransom is also called of mercy because the word mercy comes from the Latin for ransom, mercede, de mercede, in Spanish, de la merced. Thus, Our Lady directs a very practical kind of a carrying out of the exhortation I just read to you in today's epistle. It is familiar to most of you because most First Fridays it is read at the Mass of the Sacred Heart. St. Paul is praying that we comprehend in practical terms the charity of Christ, how with all the saints they show us the height and the depth and the length and the breadth. The angels, the word means messenger, 
come to give us the message of God for our charity, for all the needs that we face today. They accompany us and protect us as we go on our way, even as they inspire us. In one of the traditional angel hymns, the choir will be singing during the blessing after Mass this morning, um, there is the uh, the line, I want to be an angel. And at Scola practice yesterday, we had a little discussion about that. And someone pointed out to me, well, that, you know, no one could become an angel if you're a human being. You're going to stay that way. Well, literally speaking, that is true. But, ah, the wonders of metaphor in the English language. That is to say, we compare one thing with another. Those who are sent by God, they be sent to be angels. Those who are friends of God in all purity and grace, like little children after their baptism, we say to be angels. Say a woman who is very kind to her neighbor might be saluted as an angel of mercy. And scripture says that Almighty God made us, this is in the epistle for Christmas Day, he created us, all of us, a little less than the angels. What a remarkable thought and what a high dignity is given to us. We have a job to do. We we may not have wings and all of that angelic knowledge and power, but our Lord sends us as messengers of his love and of his truth. Just as God assigns specific duties to angels, your guardian angel, for example, so too he calls you to do some specific work for him. It might be some talent you possess. It might be some great need you see right now. Or for some of you, if you're multitaskers, it could be all of the above and even more. Our Lord, St. Paul tells us, has already prepared good works for us to do. Now, how are you going to know what Almighty God needs you to do? What's your angelic calling in this world of ours? You find that out, my friend, by kneeling quietly in the presence of God. You discover that by prayer and adoration. And then Almighty God will let you know all of the rest. You'll just know when someone's in trouble. You'll even just know what to say or what not to say as the messenger of God. There's one way in which all of us need to be Our Lady's angels of mercy or of ransom today. How did the Muslims manage to conquer so much of the world once, and now they're doing it again? I'll tell you three simple points. The first is force, and the second is faith, and the third is family. They conquered so many nations by sheer terror, the same terror that so many people are suffering from at this hour. And don't let anyone tell you any different. It is an evil. They're spreading of religion by their sword. But they also conquered by means of their faith, which is extremely simple and absolutely unchanging. And as I say, that frustrates the modernists They'd like to get the Muslims on board with the one world religion. But Mohammed already in the seventh century commenced a kind of an ecumenical movement, which he called Islam. That is to say, he artificially made up a new religion with elements from Judaism, Christianity, that makes it a heresy, and paganism, and a few of his own ideas thrown in. That's what makes it to be so very strong, is the kind of a base appeal that he built right into it, because it was no angel 
that inspired the Koran in his ear. Finally, third point, family. How are the Muslims conquering the world? Why are they at the cusp of victory in taking over Europe now, the 21st century? Demographics. By having babies, by large families, by many children. And the Europeans with, and the Americans, with their abortions and birth control, do not. How can you and I be angels of this good queen of mercy? It is the same way. By using force, the force of your strong faith expressed in prayer, the power of the family rosary. Never forget it. The power of the mass of one holy communion of holy water, of the scapular, and the power of fasting and alms deeds when added to your prayer. Secondly, by faith. Ours is the true faith. But our faith must be firm. You must have an absolute certitude in your faith or else you don't have the faith because that is what the act of faith is. That is what the gift of faith is. No questions and no doubts. Sure and unchanging. Thirdly, by family. God bless our big Catholic families and all of the children whom we bless today. Those in the world who make fun of those families and who give you the eye in the supermarket and make the snide comments behind your back in public places. Let the world mock on. It doesn't matter. One day it is going to come down to a battle between Christian families and Muslim ones. And we, we have the angels on our side. And we, we are fighting under their queen. And by her inspiration, we will know, and then we will show, the height and the depth and the length and the breadth of the charity of the sacred heart of our Lord. God bless you. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. Amen.